Now that you understand a little bit about the role of tyramine and how it works, the question is, what do you tell patients? Although administering pure tyramine capsules in doses as low as 10 milligrams can induce a measurable change in systolic blood pressure, when ingested as part of food, tyramine doses under 50 milligrams are unlikely to cause an increase in blood pressure sufficient to warrant clinical intervention, although some individuals might be sensitive to doses under 25 milligrams. When discussing with patients safety issues related to diet, here are a few important concepts to remember. In an era when the tyramine content of foods was much higher, the early 60s, and often unregulated, and MAOI users received no dietary guidance, only 14 deaths were reported among an estimated 1.5 million patients who took MAOIs. As mentioned previously, MAOIs do not raise blood pressure, and their use is associated with orthostasis in some patients. Routine exercise or other vigorous activities such as weightlifting can raise systolic pressure well above 200 millimeters of mercury. Moreover, routine baseline systolic pressures ranging from 180 to 220 millimeters of mercury do not increase the risk of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Hospital evaluation is needed only if a substantial amount of tyramine is ingested, estimated greater than 100 milligrams, and self-monitoring shows a systolic blood pressure greater than 220 over a prolonged period, for example, two hours. Ingestion of 100 milligrams of tyramine would almost certainly have to be intentional as it would require one to consume three and a half ounces of the most highly tyramine-laden cheeses. For most people, a standard amount of cheese ingestion is maybe one ounce. So one needs to emphasize to patients that only a small number of highly aged cheeses, foods, and sauces contain high quantities of tyramine, and that even these foods can still be enjoyed in small amounts. All patients who are prescribed an MAOI should also purchase a portable blood pressure cuff for those rare instances when a dietary indiscretion may have occurred and the person experiences a headache within one to two hours after the ingestion. Most reactions are self-limited and resolve over two to four hours. Patients who ingest 100 milligrams of tyramine or more should be evaluated by a physician. Under no circumstances should a patient ever be given a prescription for nifedipine or other medicines that can abruptly lower blood pressure because this may result in complications, including myocardial infarction. Instead, patients should be counseled to remain calm. Some clinicians endorse the use of low doses of benzodiazepines, for example, the equivalent of alprazolam 0.5 milligrams, to facilitate patients relaxing because anxiety elevates blood pressure. A recent emergency room study of patients with an initial systolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 160 or a diastolic pressure greater than or equal to 100 without end organ damage demonstrated that alprazolam, 0.5 milligrams, was as effective as an ACE inhibitor in lowering blood pressure. Of course, the prescription for alprazolam has to be limited to those who do not have a history of substance abuse. The point being is that anxiety, more so than tyramine ingestion, is often the reason the blood pressure is elevated. Getting patients to relax, possibly with the use of a low-dose benzodiazepine, can often avert an unnecessary trip to the emergency room. Also, tell patients that if a food is unfamiliar and highly aged or fermented, they should avoid it until they can further inquire about the tyramine content. In his extensive review, Professor Gilman provides the tyramine content of an exhausted list of cheeses, aged meats, and sauces some of which are abstracted in the table attached to this lecture. For other products, patients can often obtain information directly from the manufacturer. In many parts of the world, assays for tyramine content are required as a demonstration of adequate product safety procedures. And even the most highly aged cheeses with a tyramine content of 1,000 milligrams per kilogram can still be enjoyed in small amounts. Most products will require heroic intake to achieve clinically significant tyramine ingestion, meaning the equivalent of tyramine doses greater than 25 milligrams. The key points here are that very few people will ingest more than 25 milligrams of tyramine, even when consuming high tyramine content foods. 
for patients on MALYs, ingestion of amounts under 50 milligrams are unlikely to cause clinically significant blood pressure effects. Even in the early 1960s, when food tyramine content was much higher and MAOI users received no dietary guidance, only 14 deaths were reported among an estimated 1.5 million patients who took MAOIs. Hospital evaluation is needed only if a substantial amount of tyramine is ingested. This is estimated to be 100 milligrams or more, and Self-monitoring shows a systolic pressure greater than or equal to 220 millimeters of mercury over a prolonged period, for example, two hours. Ingestion of 100 milligrams of tyramine would almost have to be intentional as it would require one to consume three and a half ounces of the most highly tyramine-laden cheeses. Patients should never be given prescriptions for blood pressure-lowering medicines as their use may cause significant hypotension and related complications, including myocardial infarction. They should, however, purchase a portable blood pressure cuff and be counseled that anxiety is often a big contributor to blood pressure elevation.